I don't know where this is going, so let's just go with it. Dylan <laughs> is muted. Anyway, the guy that crashed his bike. Oh, up the road? Yeah. Um, Did his hands yeah. look terrible when he passed you? Um, I couldn't see. It was dark. It was nighttime. Oh, so you're just dark. like, oh, that was I a bike. Saw, that had to be. I saw the bike go by, and I was like, that was the guy. And I was like, <laughs> so I turned around real quick and was going to go, like, you know, see if he, like, needed help. You know, maybe still, like, if he needed to throw his bike in the back of the truck or something and, you know, take it home or whatever. And turn around, just, you know, quick three-point turn, took off. Never saw him. He was good. I don't know if he like sped up or probably thought she was like the police or something. He just yeah. crashed out. So he was like, I got to get like, away. I'm out of here. I didn't see they, like, I didn't see lights on like any little side road or nothing. It was just, you still have a tail light. Did he have a tail light? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think his, his accident was like that bad. Um, they're paving a main road, like right up the street. And so there's like a section of concrete where you would turn onto my road. That's like gone where they, grooved it out and they just haven't filled it in yeah um so i think what he did is he probably just went in that little drop off and it just probably just got out from under speaking of paved roads welcome to the <laughs> he said that's a great transition <laughs> yeah. topic. uh speaking of paved roads welcome to um um uh, our show that's i'm um, the host sean and that's rocky he is also a host we don't know what we're calling this show exactly. Um, it's just a... My camera's slowed down again. I think I'm going to have to use NVIDIA Broadcast. Anyway, we don't know what to call this show just yet. We are just live and winging it for the most part. And uh, so we're just friends here talking about topic topics that matter in our lives for the most part. Well, topics that, you know, relate to us, I guess. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, related topics. Relatable. Relatable topics. Related? Related, related topics. topics. Related to us through trio families. <laughs> I wish my camera would stop being stupid. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe the camera thinks you're stupid. It probably does. You ever thought about how the camera feels in this situation? Got a point. <laughs> So I have to keep, oh. I have to keep pressing uh, my camera every thirty minutes in order for it to stay on because it is not a streaming camera; it is a videographer camera, video videography camera. Which, by the way, we do have a business, uh, a videography business. If anybody would like any videography work, I can't even say it right. Am I saying it right? Got it. You introduced it to me, so <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, holler at us on the, the Facebooks. Link in the description. All right, so what should we get started with today? I know I know, um, a topic that relates to all of us, me, you, and Dylan, and Josh, if he does join in on the fun, is uh, the Gambler Series stuff. Yep. It, uh, we all love the Gambler. It is a huge part of our, it was a huge part of our, well, it was a huge part of my life. I don't know if it's still a thing for you guys. I don't think you guys have went since I've went. No. Man, my camera is just absolute ass. You see how it looks like it's, oh, now it's good. See how it looks like it's 30 frames per second? I'm pretty sure mine's 30 frames per second. Well, yours is doing. Mine's probably twenty then. I've got it set to sixty, so I'm not sure what the fuck what the deal is. I almost said a cuss word. You did say a cuss word. Anyway, the Edit, gam editor bleep that out. Bleep that out. <laughs> cut, the, cut that out. <laughs> so the uh, the gambler series uh, it relates to it was it did relate to us in a very heavily heavy way, and I say was because we don't. Um, we don't associate with not not necessarily the Gambler 500 series itself because I love those guys. Uh, Tate, I've talked to Tate Morgan, and I've met him and love the dude. He's a good guy, and he's doing good. 
with what the series is all about. What I don't like is the Alabama Gambler because that's that's where it all went south. And Rocky has been a part of two or three gamblers with me, correct? Yeah, two or three, yeah. Two or three. Dylan's been a part of two or three. Josh was on a bunch of them with me. Um, who else? Josh Banks. That'd be a, a cool little get him in here if we could. Uh, he was with me when the gambler stuff uh, kind of went. No, Josh was with me. That's what it was. Josh was with me when not all that happened. But yeah, the Alabama Gambler was a like a huge thing to me. And uh, we went to all of them. Or we tried to go to all of them at least. And then when we didn't, they were concerned about it and wanted me to be there. So I made effort to, like a really hard effort to go. And went there with the Miata. <laughs> Actually, it was the Miata I got from you. And... Um, so the story is the next gambler, I can't remember which one it was, trying to remember. It was going to be, so we had just left the Jacksonville gambler. We were camping in Jacksonville. We drove through Aniston. The The trails and stuff were actually like an hour away to from where we camped. So we left camp, went through there, did the gambler, come back. I left early because I had a headache because Miata was leaking gas. Because I filled it up, and it was just like yeah. pouring gas out the top. Yep. And it didn't it didn't have a shift boot, so you could yep. like see the road, and it was fumes were coming from the gas tank through the shifter and into the car. Even though the car didn't have a roof, it was still, you know, you circuit. Get some, you get some exhaust fumes in there too. It circulates. It, yeah, because that was back when the Miata was, you know, god awful loud. It didn't have a muffler. It was just loud as sh- shoot, you know, loud as shit. <laughs> but <laughs> um, super, super loud, ungodly loud. It was a, it was a, it was a rough time. Uh, fumes were were flowing, give me a headache. Um, as soon as we got back to camp, I drove the car up onto the trailer. We locked her down. I was going home. I done made the decision. I was going home. I was not camping. I didn't have any ibuprofen. It was going to be a bad time. And they were going to party anyway and, you know, do their thing. So I didn't want to party. I just wanted to go home. And that's what I did. Me and Josh packed up our tent and got ready to leave. They actually give me a trophy for the most unsafest car on the road because that car didn't have seat belts. Um, the doors were like, they wouldn't open, so we had to like, climb out of it. <laughs> like, it was because like, I'd put the black doors on it with no windows. And right. So it was like, the doors just like shut, and I forgot there wasn't any latches or whatever, or the yeah, handles. There was, there was no hardware in there. So the doors were just <laughs> permanently closed at the time. It was it was fun. It was a good, it was a good trip. Everything rattled, because I had razor tires on the back. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. Anyway, you want, to, you want to tell them about us getting when you got the car from me? Yeah, we could uh we could go back to that. So I had an Acura TL, and I bought. I'm gonna shout out Jody. Maybe one day we can have him on the podcast talk about like some past stuff. Um, shout out Jody. I bought the Acura TL from him. This was back when. This is back in the day, uh, a long time ago. Bought an Acura TL. I can't remember what year it was, like 99 or 2000. Um, no, it was like a 03. Was it? 02, oh, 03, yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 Super, it was a super nice car. It had been hit in the front, and yep. I bought it for 400 bucks, and I brought it home. The front end was bashed up, and I was like, we're just going to use it as a gambler. So... With it, like, why, I just threw the hood off of it. And then we just drove it around the yard, like, you know, pulling e-brake and stuff like that, having fun. And because we didn't care about it because there was nothing to fix on it. And it got water on the engine. And it, like, shut off. And it run for, like, a day. Then it crunk up because it dried out. <laughs> uh, pulled it back into the shop because we was going to play around with it, put the bumper on it. And I popped the trunk, and all of the stuff for the front end was there. 
core support, two headlights, brand new from Keystone, a radiator and condenser, both in there, like all of it, everything but the hood. It was like, oh, dude, no way. So we like rebuilt the front end, put a new radiator and stuff in it, and it ran great. And and we were still like, we was like, let's continue the gambler <laughs> with this. And we drove it a few more times, playing around with it. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube of it. But it was too low to the ground. It was too fast. It was too powerful. I'll put it that way. It was a 3-2 V6. And you'd be, like, in the grass, and you could just barely hit it. And it'd be like, Whoa! and it'd just spin. Like, that's all it would do. So it would have been a horrible gambler vehicle. It would have been really cool, but it had been a very dangerous and horrible ride because you would have been able to fly, but you could also not stop because it's just street tires. Right. And if you're going, if you're cruising through, you know, if you're cruising through the forest, Talladega forest on those dirt roads and you slam it. You remember you was with us with the focus. Cause all we would do yeah. is like pull the e-brake and stuff and you would slide yeah. by me. Um, uh, you hit me up and you said you had a Miata. Why don't you tell me about that? So, um, I got the Miata, um, me and another guy were like looking for like a drift car pretty much. And, um, he sends me a Facebook link. It was like, Hey man, I found this Miata. It's, it's kind of far away. Um, but he was like, you know, it's super cheap. It's $500. So I was like, yeah, sure. You know, you buy the car and I'll go pick it up. Or you, I guess, front the money to buy the car and I'll go pick it up. So, um, he brings me the money, me and Krista go and get a truck and trailer. We drive up to, um, it was like three hours away. It was somewhere in like Tennessee. And um, we're driving up this like super windy little mountain. Um, the roadway was like washing out from the side of the mountain and like half the road, like the right side of the road was all like barricaded off. Um, so we finally go up there and we get to like the top of it in this little like dirt hole. Got to like back it, back the trailer down in the woods. There's no lights anywhere. And there's a bunch of guys and I'm trying to call the phone number, and I'm like, hey, man, I think I'm here. I'm not sure. And I hear, like, a bunch of dudes come out of a shed. <laughs> and, you know, they're, like, they're like toting this car out there because it's, like, you know, the Miata, they don't weigh much. But they're, like, dragging it out of the shed. It was stripped, and, too. Like, yeah, it was, like, gutted all the way out. Um, it didn't have doors or anything like that when we got it. But I backed the trailer down there, and they're like, yeah, you here to get the car? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm here to pick it up. You know, I got the money. So I give him the money. I was like, yeah, this is what you and the guy agreed on, right? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the dude just, like, gets in it. He's got a set. There's no steering wheel. He's got a set of, like, vice grips hooked around, like, the little teeth on the steering wheel. <laughs> and he just, like, dumps the clutch and just rams it on the trailer. And, like, it was lowered, and it just bottomed out. So he's sitting there, got it, like, pinned on the red line. All his buddies are, like, picking up on the back bumper, trying to, like, get it up on the trailer. It, like, runs up on the trailer, almost hits the front of the trailer, and he's like, all right, dude, you're good to go. And, like, they're just gone. <laughs> they're, they're, like, they're back in the house. They're gone. I'm like, what happened? I mean, hey, you know, front curbside service, they loaded it and everything. I didn't have to lift a finger. <laughs> but we, like, throw the ramps up there, strap everything down, drive back. And, like, I didn't really look at the car because, like, I wasn't sure. I was like, hey, it's on there. You know, we're just going to go for it. I think um, we stopped like maybe an hour out from the house to like top off on fuel. And I get back there and I'm looking at the car and I'm like, oh, like the whole front end was wrecked up. It's missing a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, well, whatever drift car, I guess, you know, we'll just get parts later. Um, I've got some videos. Like once we got it back, I finally got it running. Um, it had like, I guess, a maybe a, uh, a fuel pump issue or something. Yeah, they all do. That and the rear diff was like exploding. Yeah. Um, I got it back home, you know, tinkered with it a little bit, got it running, and we got it to where it cranked up and run. Um, went and found a rear diff for, like, almost nothing. The guy was like, you come pull it, you can have it. Um, got a couple other parts off of, off of that guy. Put the rear diff in it, um, got it to where it run and drive. Did that some was, burnouts in the driveway. That was Miata fix, wasn't it? Um, no, I got the doors and uh, some other parts from him. Okay. Um, I got a rear diff and the little like tag plastic piece that are hard to find that are not cracked. Yeah. Um, 
you went and got that from some guy that had one just sitting out in the middle of the field. That is on my Miata right now. That plastic piece? Yes. The right. one that the one I got from you that you said you found in a field? Yeah. Um that's the when I bought my Miata that I have today. Um the that piece was like snapped in half. I could have fixed it. I think I still got it somewhere because I didn't want to. They're like, hard just, to find when they're yeah. not broken. I've got it somewhere. I didn't want to get rid of it because I knew I could fix it. But the one that's on it right now is the one that it got from you. The, the it's only like cut in the corner. That's it. Hmm. And I fixed it with tape. I just put tape and then I sticker bombed it. So it's just yeah. You can't, you tell. can't tell. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah, I picked up the rear div and the plastic piece. I initially like messaged the guy about getting the diff from him, and um, I think he said like ninety bucks or something like that. It wasn't much. Yeah. And um, when I was, I think I went up there and talked to him, and I was like, "Hey, you know, can I get the plastic piece as well?" And he was like, "Yeah, sure, it's just plastic." You know, he didn't care. Mm-hmm. Well, then after I took it off, he came back up there and was like, "Hey, where's the where's the tag plastic piece?" And I'm like, "That was the piece I was telling you, you know, I wanted to get." And he was like, no, those things are expensive. And I was like, well, you know, we already agreed on 90 bucks. You know, you said, cool, take it. So I was like, all right. He was like, oh, you know, all right, yeah, I guess. So (laughs) we we got the parts. um, And me and another buddy, like, put the rear diff on at the house. Like I said, I got it running. We did some, like, test burnouts in the yard. Took it down to, like, the main road. Did some donuts in the middle of the road. Like, traffic. I think you sent me a video of that. Yeah, um... My what I did not do, what I forgot to do, was bolt down the driver's seat. So <laughs> like, it didn't really do anything like in the driveway, but like I pull out on the main road and I'm cruising like maybe 15 or 20, and I like rip the e-brake, clutch kick it, and like sling it around, and the seat wasn't bolted down. So it like throws me backwards. So the car just like stops because my feet couldn't reach the pedals anymore. <laughs> the car just stops in the middle of the road, stalls out, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get it crunked back up and like have to, you know, cook it and get out of the middle of the road. And, um, it sat in my driveway for a while and I finally moved it, um, up to my mom's house and Krista followed me and like, it was really sketchy driving the car, because it's got like no ABS. I still think the seat wasn't bolted down when I drove it. Um, pretty sure like, uh, the doors and stuff were like ratchet strap across in front of me to, to hold each other shut. Yeah. Cause I don't think there was any like hardware in the doors. Um, then it sat, you know, uncovered until you came and picked it up. So you guys it, just showed up with a trailer, yeah. I I can't did did I post that TL for sale? And then you I hit think, me up. I think so. And then I messaged you and was like, "Hey, I'm looking for a daily. Uh, you know, I got this for trade if you're interested." Yeah, and me and me and Rocky met before this, and we hadn't been friends long we definitely hadn't met if that makes sense um so before this we were you know we were just acquaintances within a car club right and so i knew him from that and then so when he messaged me and was like hey i've got a miata and i was like i'm a miata guy so i was like well you know what what does it look like and I think you sent me, I think you sent me a picture on, uh, is that Josh? Yes, sir. Hey, we're actually talking, I'm glad you jumped in. Um, this is Josh, by the way. Um, uh, we have been through the gamblers. He's been, you've been through like, uh, most of them with me, correct? Yeah. Hold on. somewhere i can get to I love what it. up so this is josh and like i said he's been through some most of the gamblers with me uh this you know rocky of course um so when me and rocky this would be the first time meeting rocky in person i didn't even know him i just like i said i knew him through the car sh- car club stuff and um that I had, I think I just just joined, <laughs> if if I'm being quite honest. So we went, I went down to, um, I went down to 
I took the TL down to Rocky and unloaded the TL. I, did you send me a picture of it just sitting? I can't remember. The Miata? Yeah. Yeah, it was sitting like kind of on the side of my mom's property. Yeah. It, was like it, it hadn't been driven in a while. It was under a tree. It was plug wires were, you know, not in it. <laughs> it rained like a week before, like the whole week. <laughs> so we got down there. I parked in the road because we couldn't get the trailer down to the driveway. So I parked in the road, unloaded the TL. Then we unloaded the TL at your house and went to your mom's. Right. Got to your mom's, parked in the road, walked up to the Miata, and I was like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> it was like, I didn't know like what I expected when I got there. But Rocky's like, no, nah, this thing, like, it's meant. It works. Um, if you hold your phone sideways, Josh, it looks... Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. There we, yeah, 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 there we go. It, like, takes up the full, like, mm. s- screen or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I went... We walked up to the Miata. There's no plugs in it. Rocky's like, no, you just got to spray all the water out and then put the plugs in it. It'll run. And I was like... <laughs> And Chris thought I, Chris was with me, and he thought I was crazy. He's like, "What are you doing?" So Rocky's like, Psh! puts the plug wires in, and it fires right up, and then and you know pulls and drives and everything. And it's got a welded diff, so it's like turping in the road. And so we pull it up to the uh, um behind the trailer. Didn't I like do a burnout or something? Or you did a burnout, didn't you? Yeah, you you made me do a burnout on the like on the road before we loaded on the trailer. <laughs> so he does he does a burnout we're loading it up on the trailer and as we get it halfway up a cop drives by somebody like i guess somebody complained or something you remember that yeah like as soon as i get to the trailer like sheriff rides by and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> so he had just like the smoke had just dissipated and so we get the miata and i'm like an hour and a half away from Rocky, like where I lived. No, it was two hours, wasn't it? Because I lived in Holly Pond. Yeah, we'll say an hour and a half, too. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half around there. So we, me and Chris drive back to my house, and we've been at this all day because we went to, is it Selma, Alabama, or something like that? Went down there, grabbed a town car for Chris. That's where the town car originally came from. Chris got it. We took it to my house. When Holly Pond, and then we went to your that house. That was disgusting. <laughs> I know. So we went to it my house. Good. Yeah, that car was it. Car was gross when we picked it up, and then it sat in my yard for another five months. Under like it was disgusting, awful. We drove down to Rock's house, got the Miata, and drove back to my house. So it was a, like a long day, and pulled the Miata down. This is like on my YouTube channel too. Pulled the Miata down pull it up into my shop and I was ecstatic when I got the car in the shop. This was like my favorite thing that I owned by far. <laughs> Cause I was like, I got another Miata. Let's go. So that's where the Miata build started. I got it from Rocky and we were building it for the gamblers. And then that's when Josh and I started doing the together because you, the first time you, no, not the first time. This was the third time, third or fourth gambler that we have done. And mm-hmm. it was a whole new build, which was the Miata build. And we took our time building it because I was like, I'm going to build as a drift car. And then, like you were do- going to do, Rocky. Yeah. But that didn't last long because <laughs> we wanted to rally. Put tires on it. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted a rally car. So, uh, probably get a lot of hate for this but i took those raceland coolovers and you know the coolovers were like this i cranked them up so high that it squashed them down to like this like the the springs were touching i've got a picture of it and it's in my youtube videos as well if you like if you go look and like look at the coolovers they're touching and squeezed together to lift the car so it rode like a you know, it rode like a brick, but it was fun. It was, it was like a, it was, you know, it was badass. <laughs> it had razor tires on it. So, um, we did that gambler. Me and Josh did. Got a trophy for it. 
like I said, me and Josh were smelling fumes like the whole time. So we just come on back. I had a headache. Come on back or whatever. The next gambler was the, uh, I was building the Miata cart for that next gambler. You were going to be there, Rocky. Like you was. Um, you were going to drive the Focus. This was going to be the biggest one I thought was going to be like the biggest gambler. So, um, he messages me, the owner of the gambler, uh, Alabama gambler. He messages me and it's like, Hey, do you know a few spots up in Coleman? And I said, yeah. And I'd like to get word from word just to have context behind this kind of stuff. I don't, do you remember his name? Uh, he had a beard. Yeah, I can't remember his Short name. Short guy with beard. Yeah, I don't ever see anybody with beards. Weird. Mm. Weird. Uh, what was his name? I can't I can remember. probably look on Facebook. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it live. But I cannot remember his name. Dylan knows. <laughs> I know what car he drove. I did too. He had the like jacked up, like almost tractor tires on it. He done his own. Uh, he done his own. His own build, but he took a body of a car and put it on top of, I think, a homemade, like support system. Yeah. I, I wouldn't really call it a car, but it's like a support system to hold a body and a motor, and a transmission, on like tractor tires. Yeah. Well, to, to, so this is what happened. Um, so what happened was he messaged me and he was like, do you know any spots in Coleman? You're the only one up in Coleman that I know. Do you know any spots there? And I was having fun. Like we were messaging each other back and forth. And I was like, yeah, I know of a few spots, but they're like government owned spots. So I'd have to get permission. He was like, that's fine. Just get permission. I was like, I know of four that I believe, like, for sure that we could get. And they were government-owned spots. I had to get permission. This is not something we could just cut the, you know. And you're not supposed to do that within the gambler. You're not supposed to cut chains and go on in or whatever. Just so, you know, we have context for that. You know, we're not trespassing and stuff like that. So, a couple months go by. I'm getting no's on three of the spots. The fourth spot, I haven't got an answer on. And I'm talking to the sheriff of Coleman <laughs> County to get an answer on it. And the sheriff sees my car. He's like, you're not driving this on the road. Because it was the, at the time, it was the Miata cart. And I was like, oh, this is for Stoney. This is not for the gambler. You know, I just want to put that on record. I was not going to drive it on the road. <laughs> um. But anyway, we the it was just to show off like what we had been doing. We'd been building the gambler car or not the gambler car, the um you know, the Miata cart. And it was supposed to be this big reveal at the Alabama Gambler five hundred. So he messages me and he said, Hey, have you figured out those you know, yes or no's on the spot? I said, I've got three no's, one yes. And he's like, What the hell, dude? I'm, you know, I left this up to you to put together, and now I'm effed. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, you were supposed to put the gambler together. And I was like, if you wanted me to put the whole gambler together, I would have. But you just asked me for a couple spots in Coleman, and I was like, we can go back, like a screenshot, like that message, and send it to him. I was like, you only asked me for a couple spots. In Coleman, and I told you I don't know if I could get there because we'd have to ask for permission, in which I got three no's, and I'm not certain on the last one. He was like, well, send me the coordinates. I'll put it together myself. And then I was being nice, so I was like, you know, in my head I was like, hell no, I'm not sending you this spot so you can take credit for it. And uh, so I just didn't message him back, and he got some guy to put it together, like some kind of trail together. Uh, it ended up we were camping at Stony, and we went to Talladega Forest, and that was we just drove the trails in Talladega Forest, the main main roads 
too. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like trails that were sought after and now it was like, it was Talladega Forest main highway, the dirt road. It was fun. We had fun because nobody stuck with us. You remember that, Rocky? Nobody would like stay with us. Like we were by ourselves the whole time. They left us, and then we were all we were just us three just chilling. And then we pulled up on them at the bridge, and nobody would talk to us. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. No one would talk to us at all. Like right. It was just like me, Rocky, his wife, and Dylan, and his kids, and nobody would talk to us. So we were sitting on the bridge just chilling, and I was like, screw this. Let's just let's get the hell out of here. I was like, I don't feel like they want us here anyway. So we all, you know, jump in the car or whatever, cars, and take off. And we're just like, you know, driving by ourselves, doing what we want. And uh, <laughs> um, did the gambler or whatever come back? There was a lot of cool, like, scenes within that, too. Like, I jumped a bridge. Uh, Rocky about flipped the focus coming around a corner, holding the e-brake up. I almost hit Rocky coming around the corner in the Subaru. Like, there was a lot of stuff that did f- cool, like, danger stuff, yes. But it was so fun when during all that time. That's a whole, like, different story, though. So, we get back to camp, and my Miata car arrives. No, my Miata car arrive. That's right. All of this happened after that guy that's why they wasn't talking to us so the night before all of this happened like the main rally uh my miata cart i got somebody to haul my miata cart for me so they got there with the miata cart we pulled up everybody was like holy crap that's so cool everybody's drinking and you know hanging out having a good time around the fire uh jonathan showed up you remember that he was like hanging out with us um uh, it was just all of us just hanging out, whatever, at Stoney. And then the guy's, like, wasted. Like, the owner of the Alabama Gambler was, like, wasted. He walked out and he put his arm around me. And Rocky and Josh were sitting here. He was like, you know what, man? I could punch the shit out of you. And I just see it. I was like, what? He's like, but I'm not going to because that guy, and he like pointed to some random, I don't even know. He's probably pointing it off in the woods. I was just like watching his hands as if he'd have swung. It'd have probably been, it'd probably been over with. There we go. Anyway, had his arm around me and he was like, that guy put the gambler together and saved the gambler. And I don't know who it was. I don't know who he was talking to. I was like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, I could knock you the F out, but I'm not going to. And I was like, oh, yeah, (laughs) I probably wouldn't either. (laughs) And he stopped talking to us after that. He, like, went over to his group. He's stumbling back over there and uh, to his group or whatever. Nobody would talk to us except for, like, the Tennessee guys. That's That's the only people who talked to us. So we left and went to back to our little group. We all hung out. And then we went to Dylan's, hung out there, come back. Um, then the gambler happened. A lot of cool stuff happened in the gambler. We were by ourselves like all day long. And then we got back to camp. And everybody that didn't know like what was happening the night before was all like cheering us on. I jumped the Subaru. Again, got a massive I don't know what it is, but on the gamblers I get like a massive headache and I never bring medicine. And it's like, dude, I gotta go home. I'm sick. So, we have a video of you jumping the Subaru as well. Yeah. Like, I jumped the crap out of that Subaru. And we all, like, was like, oh, this, you know, I was like, I got to go home. Like, I'm sick as crap. So, we went home or whatever. And then um, a few, the next gambler, me and Josh went on and we had the Miata. This is what we built the Miata. Right? It was what, that's what it was. We built the Miata. No, the next one, the next one after that was, um, the one in Dallas County where we took the focus on top of that mountain. Yeah, the pond. that's what it was. And nobody would and talk to us. And it was a hurricane. Yeah, nobody would talk to us. Yeah, we, so we took the focus and we went to Jacksonville. It's where we camped. And while we were there, um, I messaged the guy and I was like, hey, we're on our way. 
and he would he just like seen the message and didn't reply. And then we yeah, got didn't the, give us the coordinates or nothing. Yeah, any did. of the stop. So we just like put in the event address, drove it there. The gate was closed, and we called. We was like calling people, nobody to answer. And I was like, "There's no way we just drove two and a half hours down here hauling a trailer, and we're not going to get into this gambler. Nobody would talk to us or nothing." So like somebody ended up walking up with up walking up on us. Hey man, you trying to get in? I was like, "Yes." Is that where the gambler's at? And they're like, yeah, it's like right down here. So they opened the gate for us. We drove on in. And then halfway through, there was like people in cars like out pissing because they were like wasted. <laughs> like, hey, man. Like the car is like parked sideways in the trail. Like they just, I don't know why, but it is just parked like sideways in the trail. And we pull up and it was uh, a good friend of mine. I thought he was a good friend, but he's like best friends with the guy that owned it. And um, I thought he was super cool. looked up to him. And then that he's never talked to me since, <laughs> since, uh, since all this happens roughly. So, cause like they built like a friendship around this gambler and it's like only them that do it now. And from the pictures I see anyway, they might have one or two new faces, but like it is like only them from what I could tell. But anyway, um, they get out of the way. We pull up down there and the gambler set up our tent and Josh is with us. Josh, you know, Banks, and then his friend is with us. We're telling him, like, dude, set your tent up. And they're like, nah, man, we're just going to, like, sleep in our cars. And they went and bought tents and everything, sleeping bags. Like, they were going to get all through, like, all in it, dude. Like, they wanted to camp. And they're like, they get there, and they're like, nah, I just want to sleep in the car. I was like, why? So they ended up sleeping in their cars. But before all that, we was, like, walking around the campfire, talking, drinking beer and stuff. Nobody would talk to us. Like, not a soul would talk to us. Even if we tried. Yeah, we <laughs> Even like, if we tried. <laughs> it was so awkward. We, like, walked up to, like, me and Josh walked up to a couple people and, like, tried to talk to them. And they would just, like, shrug it off. Like, they would not talk to us. It was like we were, like, the outsiders that shouldn't be there. So me, Josh, Banks, and the other guy, like, went and started walking through the woods, like, walking through trails and stuff that was fun did that for a while and then um what else did we do oh yeah we got a hurricane blown off yes (laughs) it's storm dude it was like the most terriblest storm i've ever terriblest as the most terrible storm i've ever been in in my entire life i woke up and the tent was like like moving like coming down and hitting me coming back up And I was like, my phone doesn't charge unless it's sitting a certain way. So I left it in the truck. So I was like, I don't want to die. So I want to go get my phone just in case. So I cracked open the tent like this. I was like, zip. So I was like, (laughs) zipping it back up. Because it literally like blinded me. The rain did. It like needles hit my face. So, I was like, well, that sucks. I can't go get my phone. I guess I'll just die alone. <laughs> Josh was over yeah, we snoring. A, <laughs> we brought a, a memory foam topper to a mattress, and our tent leaked. And that thing went from, like, this big to, like, that big and nothing but water. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awful. Like, we were, like, I was like, I'm just going back to sleep. If I, you know, if I die, I die. So, I went to sleep. <laughs> And then Josh like, woke up and was like bumping me. He was like, hey, do you know there's like an F4 tornado outside? And I was like, yep. It's yep. Been, yep. <laughs> it's been happening, bro. <laughs> You're late to this party. <laughs> so, went back to sleep. Woke up that next morning. We're sitting in like a puddle of water like this. So we get out. Like We basically took a shower. We changed clothes. <laughs> uh, unloaded the truck. Put the tent on the trailer so it wouldn't blow away. I don't know what was thinking. It was still going to blow away. Put the tent on the trailer, jumped in the Focus, and then we started driving with everybody. But as we got up the trail, everybody, like, like dipped. They were just gone. Mm. Left us by ourselves. Me, Josh, dro- Banks drove his truck. Me and Josh was in the Focus, and his friend was in that stock Civic. Yeah, stock Civic. Like, yep. 100%. 
stock and he went everywhere we did it wasn't until like the end when he crashed but yeah it's not like a clutch the whole time <laughs> he like he drove that civic from coleman down here and and drove it in the gambler the whole time up mountains and everything that whole time and then drove it home like covered in mud full stock civic it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life and uh anyway um we were by ourselves the whole time we get back to camp that day and everybody's just kind of like staying away from us and i was like i'm over this i'm over it so the there's only one person there that was like kind to us and it was like i can't remember her name but she was she's like best friends with the, like all those guys but uh or uh, her husband is like best friends with all those guys so um but they were super nice to us we towed their car their car broke down okay. we towed it back to camp for them you know just being nice and then they were like thank you so much and we was like oh yeah you're no you're welcome but that was the only time anybody talked to us at all and we made effort to talk to people and the only and that reason was- it was literally at the end. Like, we pulled them a mile to get back to camp. That's how yeah. over the gambler was. Yeah. So, we, we pulled them back, loaded the car up, and they're like, where are you guys going? I was like, well, nobody wants us here, so we're just going to leave. I said, we we did the gambler. It's fun. Um, you know, you guys have fun. We give them all of our beer, and we had barely drank anything of it. We bought a shitload of beer too like a shitload and we give every bit of it to them and they were like why are you doing this i was like we just feel like you guys don't want us here we're not gonna be back (laughs) like (laughs) banks banks was leaving he was like yeah you guys were like this is my first gambler and you guys were terrible and they were like we're so sorry i was like yeah you like you should have been nicer (laughs) it's like at least talk to us because it wasn't mean or anything they just didn't talk to us so we were we were like okay so we uh (laughs) so we packed up the car strapped it down packed everything up and we decided to leave or whatever and we was like leaving camp and everybody was like cruising by and they're just like staring at us like why are they leaving i was like yeah if you'd have just talked to us we would have freaking stayed dude and so we left and i have not been to a gambler an alabama gambler since there's been like three since nobody's invited me nothing it was all over this is all over a misunderstanding like that's all it was like he asked for for a couple spots in coleman and then was like you didn't put the gambler together that's all it was over and then it's just like i said they built like a friendship around the alabama gambler like all of those guys are like best friends now and they do everything together right at the time it was just them and then us, and then like, uh, I think his name is Corey uh, Mad- Metters or something like that. He's a cool dude. Him and his wife. Yeah. Um, they've got like a YouTube channel and stuff that they were working on. But yeah, the they are like all like super best friends now. They have like a cool group together that's awesome. But like, they just like they all rallied together, and it was like, yeah, Sean, like really messed this up for us. This one time, no. <laughs> like he could, he could like stay away from us. And I tried. I like literally tried to like be their friends, and it just wasn't working. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. So that gamblers were fun though. They were fun. Yeah, they like, were fun. Regardless if if they wanted to talk to you or not, they were fun. But it's also way more fun if everybody interacts with each other. And that's why it makes. And I'm not saying anything. I want to put that out there. I'm not saying anything bad. But when the decision to come, when the when the decision come to give up the gambler out, Alabama gambler 500, and they were going to give it to somebody, that was like, who wants it? Here it is. Who wants to take over? And I was like, dude, I want to do it so bad. I want to take it. If I if I got it, like we can make this thing, you know, massive. We do events every six months, mm-hmm. every three months. You know, we could do something crazy. 
and they give it to this guy. Hey, I won't say his name. They give it to this guy that hasn't touched it in the last year. There's not been an event. There's an event coming up. It's Toys for Tots, which is awesome. But it's it's not like a full like gambler event like there usually is. There hasn't been an Alabama gambler in, I think, over a year. I think. It's been a while. But, yeah, he took over and he hasn't, t- he hasn't done anything. He's, like, posted on there and saying, like, he's going to do stuff. But there's a difference of saying and doing. You know what I mean? And that, that guy was really active. I don't know if he's just, like, work, you know? Like, work's just got to him and he hadn't been able to do stuff. Maybe that was it. If that's the case, give the Alabama gambler somebody else. Let them take over. Somebody that's got more time on their hands. Like us, because we're YouTubers and stuff. Like, let us get it, get a hold of it, and and make it like a thing. Like, make it like so we can do events. Like, the last owner of the gambler, me and him don't see eye to eye no more. Like, he hates me. <laughs> and I really don't hate him. I really don't know because I didn't really do anything to hate him. But he hates me. Um, even though we don't talk, he was really good about putting the events together. We was having like three events a year. Plus the, to- the you know, plus the, uh, what do you call oh. it? Plus the Toys and Tots, like those events. Toys for Tots? Yes. To- toys for Tots. That's what it is. Toys and things. But yeah, there's no, not saying anything <laughs> bad about it, but there should be more events. The guy that got it should have thought a little more into it. Like maybe he just got in over his head and he's not been up. He's not been able to do an event. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the story behind it. I don't really care to know it because I wanted it. So, <laughs> and I didn't get it. But yeah, that was my experience with the Alabama Gambler 500. I do not recommend it. It's not the coolest thing ever anymore. They probably won't. I don't know when their next event is. <laughs> so, the real, you know, the the rally event, you know, for the most part. And then we thought about doing something, you know, not to copy the Alabama Gambler or the Gambler 500, but we thought about getting some friends together. This is just strictly for YouTube. This is not something that we wanted to make an event. We just wanted to do something to build content around the cars that we built. Cause I have like, I mean, you guys know this. I have like three cars that's built for the Alabama Gambler, and we don't use them. And we have like five because we just got two. Uh, me and me and Rocky had decided, you know, on those two Hondas, that what we were going to do with those. And it's like we have all these cars to do nothing with. And so, um, we had thought about doing something to build content with those cars. And we just didn't want to, like, copy the Gambler 500, but it was going to be, you know, cheap cars, rally, um, and we were just going to try to, like, keep it low-key. But we wanted, you know, if anybody wanted to join in and do it, it would be fun. But it's not going to be anything associated with, like, picking up trash and, like, we was doing. And, by the way, we loved that shit. Like, we was helping the environment. We was riding stupid cars and having fun. But, you know... It's whatever, or, you know, on the gambler side of it. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I'd be all for doing like a, you know, a, a cheap car off-road event, you know, kind of thing. I think that's awesome. They have the Hoopty X, but, you know, that's like full-fledged, like, rally car, you know, in mm-hmm. a $500 car. <laughs> What's the... uh? What's the one that's uh, the main event? Is it in Ohio or Washington or something like that? Uh, I believe it's like Washington or Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. That would be dope. We want. We were gonna go. Me and yeah. me and you was gonna go, and we uh, we went to New York. That was like that was it was either go to Oregon to the Gambler, or it was go to New York, and I was like, no questions asked. Let's go to New York. That's my dream, you know, dream place that's where i want to live is new york I was like, let's go to new york so that's what we, we we took like what a week and a half and we was up there just you know hanging out 
Can I, can I put in my vote as a guy that's been to Washington? I've not been to Oregon, but a guy that's been to Washington and been to New York, Washington all day. New York all day. No. Yeah. I've never been to Washington, and I've been to New York. I pick Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I would live in Manhattan 100%. Thousand percent. I would I would live in Manhattan. Coolest place. Like, coolest place I've ever been. Like my brother lives down there and uh I was like, Sean, I'm telling you now, before we can get on this plane, I'm doing this for you. I'm not a city and people person. I would rather have scenic views. I like the plane ride more than I like New York. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were running around New York just just drunk. Just, drunk dude. I was I every felt, day. Dude, I was it was crazy. I cannot believe we like we we're walking the streets of New York just wasted. That was the craziest place I've ever been. It's cool. And then we rode bikes. We rode a bike with all of our stuff on it from Manhattan all the way to Langardia Airport. We went through the Queens. We went through the Bronx. We went through everything on a bicycle. Yeah, because his brother was like, "Hey, can you take us to the airport?" And he was like, "No, I gotta work." <laughs> We were like, what do we do? And he was like, I will uh, I will depart from you guys at the Grand Central Station. That's as far as I go. And then, like, we split ways because he's got to go to work. And we were like, well, we got to go north. <laughs> to, how do we get there? He was like, just get an Uber. And we looked at Ubers, and the Ubers were like, I was like, it was expensive to, like, go from – town square to you know to uh to LaGuardia and we were like let's uh let's let's just ride bikes how bad could it be like <laughs> terrible <laughs> 10 out of 10 would not do it again <laughs> dropped in a the old address and it was like bicycle one hour I was like okay it's not bad ride a bike an hour Who you know everybody ride bikes an hour you know, not through New York, but like that's as we <laughs> we can ride a bike an hour. There was the city did bikes. The whole hour. Yeah. We did a whole hour. We get to the airport where the destination says it puts us at a gas station behind the airport, and then we're asking all these taxi drivers that are getting gas, we're like, "Hey, how do we get there?" And they're like, on a bike, another forty-five minutes. I'm like, "No, it's called Uber. I'll pay for it. I don't care." So I call him, and then a taxi driver pulls up and was like, hey, y'all look lost. Just get in the cab. Give me like 20 bucks. I'm on my lunch break, and I'll take you to the airport. And that's what he did. It, it was like Pretty cool. it was like some some mad kidnapping vibes. But we jumped in anyway because it was like our yeah. only chance. <laughs> Is there that or ride a bike for another 45 minutes? I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. This was a three-hour walk or 45-minute bike ride. And then it was a what was a fifteen minute drive. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Was the walk like uphill and the bike ride downhill? <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> you, you like GPS will only let you do certain things. Like you know how you can't turn left, like at a uh, certain intersections when you're on GPS. Like it's like that when walking. So you have to walk. Where like there's all the way up and around and down and back over. Like you have to cross like legit crosswalks. You have to stay on legit sidewalks and walk that. So it would have been it would have been forty five it would have been three hours if we'd have just walked, you know, around the fence or whatever. But where we had to walk is like three hours. And then where we had yeah. to ride bikes was like 45 minutes because we had to go, we had to backtrack. But there's no bikes. Mm. Like where we ended our bike ride was the last rental section to put the bikes back. There was no more. So we couldn't even ride bikes if we wanted to because there's none at the airport. Because we rented those bikes. Which, by the way, way cheaper than an Uber. Instead of like $45 for an Uber... <laughs> Hundred and forty five dollars for an Uber. I think we spent like six bucks. Yeah, it was like it was six, six dollars. We rode the bike for like an hour, so it was uh, it was definitely cheaper. I think it was like a hundred. It was like a hundred and forty, hundred fifty dollars to go from Town Square to 
LaGuardia. That's why we were like, no. Yeah, we'll walk. <laughs> yeah, we'll walk, bro, before I pay 150 up. bucks. <laughs> so that's what we did. But, yeah, we, we went. To, we got off track there, but we went to New York instead of Oregon for the gambler because that's what we wanted to do was go to the gambler, the original one. But we went to New York, which was awesome. And it's like a one-in-a-chance-lifetime thing that I thought that would be. But I'm for sure going back. It's going to be a twice-in-a-lifetime chance. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm sad that I had to go the first time. <laughs> dude. Thanks. I'm, I'm going back. Dude, that's so cool. Such a cool place. I'll go for my brother. I, I wouldn't live there right now because, you know, all the all the crap that's going on with uh, New York. But definitely would like go back and hang out so this uh, this thing that we want to do with like I said it's not something we want to like build an event out of and and, and all that but we do want to put together something for us ex Alabama Gambler 500 drivers or whatever so we can have some fun and bring something to the community. And it's not something we're going to just do all over Alabama. We just want to do something here. It's, we're, we're, I was looking for some land, but it land's hard to find, and, you know, these days. And uh, But we're working out a deal with a company to sponsor this. And, you know, they were just, the sponsor would be like we use their land in it'd be like two or three acres. We're going to build obstacles. There'll be a campground. We can, do, it's just something that, you know, we can do like we can bring people with us. Like me, you Rocky Dylan, everybody that, you know, was doing the Alabama gambler went banks, his friend, all of them. Cause they all ask, you know, when are we going to the, when are we going to do the Alabama Gamblers? Like, I don't even know, dude. I don't even know if it's the thing anymore because <laughs> they haven't posted anything. So we want to do something along those lines so we can, you know, get to do stuff like this. And uh, we got huge videos planned. Um, good, me and Rocky had a pretty good idea of how to make like a drama series of pulling up and getting the, getting the uh, cars. I'm hoping that will still – be a cool thing to do because nobody's gotten back in touch with me <laughs> but yeah for the most part it'll be a cool event we'll be able to use our vehicles that we built for the Alabama Gambler we got plenty so you know Josh will be able to have you, you know you'll be able to have a vehicle to play around with and it's not going to be like a demolition derby thing it's going to be like something fun mm-hmm. but It'd be something to build content with. And, uh, cause we were making like really good content in my backyard when I lived in Holly Pond, you know, just that all the stuff, all the videos that we did, like Rocky come over we done a, like a whole last video. Um, you know, you came over, Josh, we had, you know, again, whole last video where he's jumping the Subaru and stuff. Yeah, it was fun. Mm-hmm. You got anything? Yeah I, think it's a good idea. yeah, I think so as well. I like, uh, I mean, I like trail riding and stuff, but for me personally, what's what's more fun is the obstacles part. So, like, have things for for ramps. So, like, you know, in the gambler, you have your coordinates, and then you get points. You get points for picking up trash. You get points for, um making the destination checkpoint so like the checkpoint coordinates could be like in the sand bunker you can make it all the way to the sand bunker but you if you don't go in the sand bunker and back out you don't get the points um i like that that idea but like with obstacles it's like if there's a jump you have to actually do the jump to get the points or um if there's a huge mud hole and like you could potentially destroy your car hopefully your your bad build's not a bad build and like you go through it, but that's the only way to get the points. But like there should be other ways to go around the ramps just in case you don't want to do it or go around the mud just in case you don't want to do it. 
So I like the point system. I like the trophy system, the having fun like that. But do the stuff, not just, oh, here's a checkpoint, go around the tree. You know, hit the ramp. The, the obstacles is what's fun for me, for sure. I think that should be something that we should look into, if, you know, whenever we're we're doing our build. I mean, I, me and Sean's talked about it a lot. Like, even if you have a, a mountain, like a hill, like a Ford Focus, you know, who can climb up the highest? You know, you get the points. It's just stuff like that. That's what I want to see. That's what I'd like to do and see as well. I'm That's just some right. ideas to pitch. Let's see. We put like a little bit more um, competition and challenge behind it too. Not, yeah. just, not just going out and, you know, cruising, I guess. I guess like still have that option if that's what you want to do. Um, I mean, for like those people that mm -hmm. actually do drive their vehicles to the events and, you know, yeah. plan to drive them back, they may not want to, you know, jump it off into a mud <laughs> hole or whatever. Yeah. That's not why I say like you need things like go around the ramp or, you don't have to participate in like the rock climbing or you don't have to hit the jump. You know, there's yeah. ways around it to keep doing all the other obstacles and all other trail rides. So Not a, it's just, you have to, you have you to watch to some more. stuff. You have to watch yeah. some stuff like that. Cause there's people like me and Sean that will just go, we will go balls out on the first thing. And it's like, Oh, cars total. And then it's like, we'll That's your risk. The the I feel like you're calling, <laughs> feel like you're calling me out. No, no. <laughs> I said me and you. I said us both. <laughs> Dude, that was like Dylan. I wish Dylan was on right now. Um, Dylan was. Do you? Dylan was so disappointed in me. Do you? Do you remember that? He was so disappointed, and I've never seen Dylan disappointed in me, which is surprising. But that day, he was like disappointed because <laughs> I jumped it. We hadn't started the trail yet. Everybody was lined up. And I was like, you know, I was like, I want to jump the Subaru. So we like, mm -hmm. I was like, I can do better than that. Yeah, do better so than that. Yeah. Let's let's get the crowd going. And we come around us. Ah, ah, <laughs> and the Subaru is just like, hey, da, 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 da. and then like the wheels just bent in. And when that happened, and we come to a stop. I couldn't like drive the Subaru and there goes everybody in the line. They just start headed toward the a exit of Stony, and Dylan's like, all right, we'll see you later. And I was like, no, 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 I need your help. <laughs> Come here. Oh, that's right. We hooked chains uh, to the, I think it was the upper control arms and Dylan no, like snatched it with the Bronco. We did it with the tires. Like we hooked the chain around the top of the tire. Around the tire and snatched it. That's what it was. And Hammer. there we go. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we hooked the chain around the top of the tire and I was like Dylan's like this isn't going to work I was like Dylan it's in my head I know it's going to work it's in my head my theory is if you give it the beans just let out the clutch just jump you know bark the clutch and it'll pull that tire you know and it'll in, in theory it was supposed to whoop, you know the in theory oh. We lost Josh. <laughs> so in theory, that's what was supposed to happen. So Dylan was like, ah, ah, ah. it was like, like dragging the Subaru. And I was like, let the clutch out. Dylan's like, Stoop. and it like, bam. And it like pulled the wheels. Like the wheels were like this on the rear and it like pulled them like this. <laughs> and, Oprah and then, shot it. Yeah. So the wheel was sitting like this and, and then, we hooked the other side and bam, did it like that. So the wheels were just sitting like this. And I was like, that's fine. <laughs> it's and good. We, yeah. We drove for the rest of the day like that. I want to say, yeah, it was like that again until you jumped it the second time. We jumped when you, the, when you did the big jump at the end, like yeah. at the end of the day, you did the big jump and it just folded everything up again. Yep. So the end of the day, I was like, I was tired. I had a headache and I was ready to go home. Taylor pulled up and picked me up. And then everybody was like, jump the Subaru, jump the Subaru. Because there was this Maverick Razor jumping. And he was like, which? What do, 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 do. And he like wasn't doing anything. Uh, I like your sound effects. Yeah. They're spot on. They're spot on. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like, everybody was like, uh, I don't know how to say my friend's name. I think it's Edwin or something like that. Anyway, 
Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's doing really good, and he's uh, he's part of the Alabama Gambler friend group. He does still talk to me. He's got a Cadillac. It's really nice, jacked up Cadillac. You remember it was like the blue one. And <clears throat> anyway, he's still got a he's still doing good, and he's doing good on social media too, from from what I can see. But anyway, he was like, "Send it," and I was like, "Hell yeah, this is my five minutes of fame right here, baby." So I come flying around and just, I mean, pinned out, throttle, just bouncing. And second gear, pinned out, just, whoo. And it was, in the video, you could just hear the car just, and it just bent the wheels back in. <laughs> I just pulled up to the door, got out, shut the door, and I was like, see ya. <laughs> I'm out. Y'all, y'all clean it up. <laughs> got in the car and went home. I was, I was over it. Cause by the when that happened and it landed, it like jarred my back, oh, <laughs> and, yeah. and I already had a headache, and I was like, "Oh, it's time to go home." I um, remember the, there was the other guy, like me and me and my wife drove the the Ford Focus all day, and like had no problems out of it. It ran good all day. Okay, I was gonna say the guy the guy went and drove the Focus, pulled up like. I don't know what, maybe five minutes later, it was like, yeah, Sean, I don't know, it's dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere, too. Just, yeah. He was like, let me uh, let me take the old Focus for a ride. It's a Supra, too. He, he, must, he ran the Supra hot. Remember? I didn't know about that. Yeah, he ran Supra uh, hot, jumped in the Focus, the radiator was hanging out of the Focus when he got back. That's right. That's what it was. It was like hanging out of the back. He's like, I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. Jumped to the truck left. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> left us there to fix it yo boys have fun <laughs> <laughs> i remember that so so yeah we had to we had to fix that and then fix the subaru mm-hmm. again because it was running mm-hmm. hot and then uh then we all finally got to where we can get out in sony and i was in my miata cart and drove it out to drove it out on the trails and the plug fell out of the sidewall. Remember that? Yeah. The yeah. freaking tire went flat. Yes. So we couldn't drive it. It was on a flat, so we had to drive it out because we didn't have an air tank or anything. Well, we did. We had an air tank, but yeah, we we had an air tank, but we had no way to plug the tire. Yeah. I think hole, we tried to pl- did we try to plug it? Yeah. The hole was like, you know, this yeah, big it around. A, it was a big hole. We had like five plugs in it, and it, it still we couldn't do anything with it. So. Yeah. I scraped against like a like the tire scraped against the sidewall and it like just tore the plugs out, yeah. and then it sounded like an explosion went off. Like, and then it was flat. Yeah, everybody remember, thought um, it, everybody thought it was like badass though, like the Miata cart. But that was yeah. like that was this peak right there. After that, it was you know we just did donuts in it in the road. Drove it fast yep. when we wasn't supposed to. Drive it fast <laughs> on the road. I drove it and got pizza a couple times in Holly Pond. I just want to say, you know, shout out to that rear deal. I blew it apart. I know, but that thing held up through a lot. Oh yeah, I know. I did a burnout I, on a wooden bridge. We did. We did the the burnouts in it here. You know, taking it to your place. I know you did burnouts in it a lot. Every um, day with the razor <laughs> tires. Yeah. Doing burnouts and donuts with the razor tires, and like those those NA Miata diffs are like glass; they're oh, yeah. fragile. And I welded that one myself. Like I took that <laughs> one apart and welded it. I don't think I even put fluid back in it. I'm pretty sure it was dry. <laughs> but it was I welded, messed up. <laughs> <laughs> welded that thing myself and like put it back in there. So I'm you know shout out to that thing. It held up through a lot. That was a trooper right there. That was an open diff as well, right? And you just that, welded yeah, it? Yeah, it started out as an open diff, yeah, and I welded the spider grease in. Yeah, it was a, it was a good diff. It's, I've still got the Miata cart, by the way. I don't have a motor and trans for it, but I do still have the shell of the Miata cart. Um, there's a lot it's, of pieces missing. It's just time for an LS, though. That's all it needs. The thing is it, mangled. LS... So long travel suspension in the front, some decent, you know, travel in the rear. That'd be a bad mamma jamma. It all right. So let's say we did something like that, right? 
in theory, if we did that, we would need a full cage, a new diff system, because yeah. the diff is blown apart and the axle Good. is broke. So there's like a lot to it. And like the inside of the axle is like welded inside the diff because it is like it got hot. Right. Like I honestly yeah. don't think there is fluid in it because <laughs> <laughs> it, it got hot, dude. I like did a 10 minute burnout, like let the car overheat. Like Wait, no, I did. I did put fluid in it because I remember um, I had the car up on jack stands, but like they didn't, they, they only went to like the lowest setting on the jack stands. So I was like underneath it with the diff in my face, trying to like put fluid in it. Yeah, I do remember doing that because <laughs> I put uh, I would say it was like eighty weight or ninety weight or something like that. Yeah, it was like gear oil, um, but it was like super thick stuff. And I remember laying under the car forever because I was trying to squirt it out of like this tiny little nozzle on the end of that big bottle. And I'm just <laughs> like, ever I was underneath there. I do remember that. So it did have fluid in it. I don't know. How long it had fluid in it. <laughs> I know I, I blew that diff apart. Like it, yeah. it, it would only, I, I it was would. like one wheel was spinning. That was it. Like it was, it was blown apart for sure. 100%. But I still have it. It's just over at Garrett's. We got to, if I had, if I had somewhere to put it, I would like pull it there. So the focus is over there. And I, give Garrett the town car because he needed the motor and trans. So I just uh, give him the, I give it to him and then, but yeah, the Miata carts over there. The focus is over there. We got to go get them and bring them back to Dylan's yeah. at some point. Cause that's where all of our cars are is at Dylan's right now. And then I need to get my other Jeep over there so we can get it done. Cause that'll be like, the rescue vehicle at some point when that Jeep is done. But I got a, like my Jeep that's there, my full wheel drive Jeep. I bought a two wheel drive Jeep and we got to transfer the front diff from my four wheel drive to the two wheel drive so we can make it four wheel drive. Right. The diff, the, you know, I think the transmission's got to go if it's not the same transmission. And then the transfer case and all that has to do with the full right. drive. It's got to, we're going to transfer all that. Because the shells and, and the XJs, the shells are the same. Whether it's two-wheel drive or full drive, everything bolts up. So you can take a two-wheel drive and make it a full drive pretty easily. So my full drive Jeep that I impulsively bought for a 1000 bucks has became a parts Jeep. I have no at the moment. Well, we have a bunch. We have the, like I said, we have the Focus, the two Hondas, yeah, uh, I'm trying to get a Saturn. Jonathan's got a Saturn sitting over there, and he wants. I think he wants. It's been sitting over there for five years, same spot for five years. Let's see if it's we can. Tires are, tires are still good. <laughs> it's an all-wheel drive Saturn that had like some minor transmission issues. Yeah. So and so I was like wanting wanting to see if we, could, you know, snag that up. I'm hoping we could, but. But yeah, I think he's just got a busted fender and some minor transmission issues. I think he's wanting five hundred dollars for it, like five years ago. Cause I, I think I posted it on Facebook, to see if anybody wanted it in the gambler groups and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe maybe he still want like, you know, super cheap for it. Yeah. If we can, um, we'll get it and make it like something cool. I might still try and find something among here. Um, so that I've got, you know, like something I can work on and stuff like that. Because you guys are like an hour away from me, so. Yeah. That is true. You live so far away. It's a good drop. Time to time to move up here. Oh yeah. Let me just let me just drop everything and <laughs> go up there. <laughs> That's how you do. That's what you're supposed to do. You're just supposed to move yeah. up here, meet with That's your friends. Easy peasy. Just relocate everything. I do it every year I move. I'm in a new house I, now. <laughs> well, I've not moved every year. Ever. No, I move every year, dude. <laughs> this is what everybody says. They're like, Sean, you move every year. It's like, yeah, because I don't want to renew my lease. This place is hard. They're, you know, one freaking place is horrible. See the bad landlords? 
or you got bad neighbors. That's literally, you get one or two. All right, everyone. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Do you want to close it out or you want to keep going? Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah, it's like nine, not, nine, not, 16 or so. Yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, this is kind of something new to us that we're doing. Um, yeah. We want to do this every week and, you know, get better at it, obviously, because we don't know what we're doing. Um, we are planning on having more guests on. We've talked to a bunch of people already. Um, this is something we feel would be fun. And, um, yeah. So, we're going to close it out. Yep. Of, of course. And uh, we will be on next week. Your co host, you're supposed to say something. Um, thanks for joining in with us and uh, giving us your time. Hope we want to do this and we want to uh, get better at it, obviously. Um, <laughs> no, um, thanks for coming and hanging out. And, um, you know, we'll see what we got going on next week. We'll have another episode ready. We'll come up with something. Get um, some guests on. We are, we are actually, and also we are working on getting this put on Spotify and, and stuff like this. We got to find a, the right distribution distribution company to do this with, um, but yeah, we do want this to be like a weekly thing that we are going to do. Um, it's like a podcast style thing that we want to do, video and and sound. So we're working on getting it to put on Spotify. Just bear with us; we will get it done. I promise. But yeah. Until next week, we will see you guys. On the flip side, right? Is that did we flip, correct? Yeah. Are are we flipping? Editor. I don't know. Did you I said flip side, did we just do we like we flip, correct? What do you what do you say? I thought she was acting like he was froze. Me? Huh? Yeah, you're you're supposed to like close it out. After I close it out. So you may just say the same thing you say after we're done. No, no, no. You don't say the same. Like good cop, bad cop. No. You're like, hey, thanks for watching. I'm like, let's watch the next one. I'm like, you want, you want good, good host, bad host? We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody.